Now in this lecture, we'll be taking a look at some of the functions that are part of the project. So for instance, what we'll be doing is we'll be starting with save jobs. We have already covered save company. Now we'll be looking at save jobs and then we'll also try to cover some other methods and then the rest of them will be covered in the next lecture. So starting with save jobs, the idea behind this is like once a company has been created, they will be obviously posting some jobs. Those jobs can only be accessed by the company who has created it. So here what we are trying to do is obviously the usual variables you can see over here. In this case, the collection name is jobs container and some of the packages that we need in this is Azure Cosmos and the one called JSON Web Token. Now using this, we are going to authenticate the company just trying to access these jobs. So if their email ID matches, then only they will be allowed to access. Now here, this is where we are doing this. So request.headers.authorization is being decoded and then we are checking whether the emails contain the email ID of the company or not. And if it is not matching, then it simply returns cannot access other users' data. Otherwise, it will simply go ahead and create the job over here and then it is going to insert it into the jobs container database and then return jobs saved successfully so that's one thing and in order to install json web token in our previous lecture we've already seen how to install new package manager packages using this debug console so here you can see i've installed json web token for this particular method save jobs now let's go ahead and take a look at some of the other methods as well so once a company has been created they have posted the jobs now let's go ahead and see how we can retrieve those informations like get company info and then get company jobs so here i'll be clicking on get company info and then i'll go to code test and remember these all are methods over here you can find their triggers by going to the integration tab so you can see that this is a HTTP trigger and output is HTTP and if you click on this one specifically it will give you more details about the kind of trigger that it is. So here we have HTTP trigger, the request is REQ and the authorization level is at function level and the method is GET. So HTTP GET method is being used over here. Now let's go back to code and here you can simply see that Based on the email ID, we are returning the input document. And in this case, we get more idea based on the kind of method that we have created. So if you go back to the integration, you'll find the other piece of it that is over here, the input. So input is the Azure Cosmos DB. So if I click on this one inputs, you'll see the binding type is Azure Cosmos DB, document input parameter name is input document, database is a DD apply DB, collection is company container, and this basically is the connection string which we are making use of to get the data. And then the query that we have over here is select all from C, where C dot email is equal to the email that is being passed. So if I want to get information about a company, we are using the email ID of that company. And that is what is being passed over here as a SQL query. Now, once we go back to our function, you can see it is just taking that into account and for document. The email is automatically provided over there in the SQL query. And whatever result is then found is being sent over here as part of the input document. And then you're getting the results. In case there's no data found or the email ID is not existing, then it says please pass job ID or the query string, which obviously is the error message that they will see. So that's how we can retrieve the company information. Now the next thing is getting the company jobs. Here also, let's first go to the integration tab and see the HTTP trigger and input document type. So here also we have similar setup. If I go to the trigger, you'll see it's of type get and if I go back and see 
input document over here. Again, you will find the similar kind of thing, just like get company info. And after this, inside our code, we are doing the following things. Like first of all, using the Azure Cosmos package. Then these are the parameters like the DB endpoint, auth key, and database name. Then we have the jobs container, and here we have the JW token. Now, what we're doing is we are creating a client instance. Then we have the database using the client instance. And we have an instance for the container that we have mentioned over here, jobs container. That being said, based on the email ID, we'll be retrieving the company information. So here, you can see, again, we are using the JWT to decode. And here we will be passing the company's email ID. Once that is there, it goes inside this code block. And what it does is, based on the input document for each company, so for that company, we will be basically getting the ID of that particular company. So this will basically return one item only. And here we have that in the job collection. Now, once we have that, we are simply running a query over here. Let's say select all from C, where C dot company ID in this job collection. And once we have that query specification, it goes and using the container dot items, fetches that information. So C that you see over here is nothing but the jobs container reference. So over here, all we are saying is, get me jobs for a given company. And that company is basically identified using the company ID, which is part of the job collection array. So here we will be retrieving that information using the container.items.query. And then this is the query spec that we've passed. All this information will then be returned over here as body of the request. So this is what we are returning. And this is the jobs that we have created. Now, in the next one, we'll be covering some other aspects as well, like creating applicants and then applying for a job.